So tell me more about your role and calling as a church leader, because I understand that's been through some fairly significant changes. Yes. And you actually had a period of, I think, of burnout. Yeah. Um, tell me that story of, of what happened. Yeah, there. well, when we planted, I mean, some of the backstory there is we planted, I was 23, I was the co-planter, basically, became lead pastor when I was 28, and we grew by about a 1,000 people a year for wow. about seven years straight. And so it was just this wild mm. ride, exhausting, like I didn't have any kids at the time, and it was just, you know, yeah. six days a week, wake up in the morning and work until I couldn't move anymore kind of thing. And it just, um, and I, I kind of, you know, and we were successful on the outside, by the American megachurch metrics. <laughs> Everything we were doing was just, you know. Everything just, looked great. Yeah, it was yeah. just killing it, you know. And, but yet on the inside, I was dying. My own transformation to become more like Jesus of Nazareth was at a standstill because I was just so emotionally unhealthy from all the work. And I was learning the hard way that I don't fit the mold. I'm not an extroverted CEO. At one point we had, I think, 93 people on staff or something like uh -huh. that. That's not a pastor or a Bible teacher. That's a you know executive director of a nonprofit. That's <laughs> not what God made me to do. So I had to learn the hard way that I'm a human being, I'm not a machine, that I was made to work, but I was also made to rest, that um, bigger is not always better. Mm -hmm and quality and quantity are often in tension. And I had to learn the hard way who I am and who I'm not. And that has been a really hard journey, but so um, much freedom has come out of it as I've realized, oh, I'm not the extroverted CEO, type A, mega leader. Mm -hmm. I'm a introverted, kind of melancholy, thinker, bookish, mm -hmm. reader, writer, teacher. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, I stepped down and demoted myself, which I, I go around telling people, demote yourself. It's the best thing I ever <laughs> did. And uh, demoted myself and stepped down from leading our little family of churches, asked if I could just lead our one in the city, which is where we were living and our heart has always been for the urban core. And uh, that was three and a half years ago, and I have not looked back. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just been life-changing. The last couple of years, I've basically just devoted my life to slowing down. Mm -hmm. I think that hurry, Dallas Willard said that hurry is the great enemy of spiritual life in our day. Mm -hmm. He had this great little line, you must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. So I've just been trying to slow down, really order my life around the spiritual disciplines, uh, prayer, fasting, reading the scriptures, Sabbath, a weekly meal with my community, worship on Sunday, um, living simply through generosity and justice and just an affront to materialism, which is so widespread in our culture, and really just making what Jesus called abiding, uh, whatever you want to call that. Brother Lawrence called it the practice of the presence of God. I love that. Making that the number one priority in my life. And there's been other things too, therapy mm -hmm. and community and health and mentorship. But man, just this last three years of just slowing down, mm. really leaning into the practices mm. of Jesus, and just saying, let's make abiding like the main thing, mm. that my first goal, yeah. more than pastoring or fatherhood or am I being a good husband or any of that. Yeah. Let's just make like just moment to moment the practice of the presence of God yeah. from when I wake up to when I fall asleep. Let's make that goal number one, mm. and everything else comes after that. And obviously it's a journey, like you don't, I'm not there, mm -hmm. but I'm at least en route. <laughs> and it has been so transformative. I just feel like a whole new person over the last, and I feel like my transformation to Jesus has started back up, into the image of Jesus mm -hmm. has started back up again. Yeah. And we still have a long ways to go, but at least we're moving in the mm -hmm. right direction. When I, when I read your book, Garden City, I think my favorite passage in that book was where you describe your Sabbath. Yeah. And you describe what you and your family do Every, it's not a Sunday because obviously you're preaching on a Sunday. Yes, so whatever right. day of the week yeah. it is, you have a day where you. This is your Sabbath. Yep. You're not working. I um, love ritual and routine and rhythm. I'm kind of a rules person. Uh -huh. I know a lot of people hate rules. I love rules. They make me feel safe. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what that is, but um, all that to say. So this is just. I see all of this as wisdom not as some kind of legalistic Sure, picture. so it's not, yeah, that's a helpful point. This isn't necessarily the way you're saying everyone should practice their yeah, Sabbath. Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, um, it's just, I think there's wisdom. And clearly when I read it, it appealed to me. It may not appeal to everyone. Yes, that's why I preface it in that way. So I think, because what's life-giving for me mm. with my personality, my stage of life mm. is very different than what's life giving to somebody else who's yeah. a extroverted 20 something who doesn't have any family or kids and mm -hmm. just wants to go out in the town all day. Like that's just a very different thing and not yeah. better or worse, it's fantastic. But yes, 
for us, we Sabbath, um, no, most people would Sabbath, I think Sunday's the best time. But for me, Sunday's kind of a marathon day. Mm -hmm. We have gatherings in the morning and then at night, I don't get home till about 11 p.m. So um, Sunday's not the best day for me. So we Sabbath actually Friday night to Saturday afternoon. And we, that's, we started. That's pretty biblical, to be that's fair. Pretty that's biblical. pretty biblical. If you I'm want to go back lie. to what it was like. People think, is that like, that actually is, uh, for those of you listening, the Jewish Sabbath, the, the Jewish day is, measure, is measured from sundown to, um, to sundown. And so it starts on Friday night and ends yeah. on Saturday afternoon. But that's not why we do it. We honestly <laughs> just do it because we can't it do Sundays. Yeah. And we used to do Saturdays, but we found that actually starting at night with dinner is a game changer. So basically, right. we, we start on Friday night. We um, power off all of our phones, all of our laptops. There's actually no technology in the house for 24 hours. We gather around the table, we light a candle, we read a psalm, we pour a bottle of wine or grape juice for the kids, <laughs> and we um, invite the Holy Spirit and open our time in prayer, and then we just feast. We just have this like massive dinner. We just eat for about two hours and dessert, and we go around the table. I have three kids and we do highlight of the week, and we just have this great time. And then usually we collapse into bed, we're exhausted by the end of the week, and usually we go to bed really early. There's no, there's no TV to watch, there's nothing. So usually we read, we pray, we're all readers. Um, and then we collapse into bed, and then Saturday we just get up, and there's lots of time, and just Bible reading, and prayer, and lots of good coffee. Then I make a huge brunch for all the kids. It's summer right now, so we'll go on a nice long walk. We live right by a park. We'll, go down and get a donut or something like that with the kids or go for a walk in the park and have brunch together. And then in the afternoon, you know, I normally go read and journal and kind of maybe take a walk by myself and the kids will do whatever. My wife is extroverted. She'll ride her bike and go get coffee with her best friend around the corner or something. And, uh, and then we come back together and kind of end it at the end of Saturday. But that's it. It's just 24 hours for us. We really try to help people to distinguish between a day off and a Sabbath. Mm -hmm. um, a day off is a great thing. A day off is essentially a day where you do all the work that you don't get paid for. So you pay the bills. If you live in suburbia, you mow the lawn or mm -hmm. whatever. And um, you play, mm -hmm. which is great. Play is, a, I think, essential part of being a healthy human being. And you buy stuff if you want to go out and go shopping or whatever. And that's great. A day off is a great privilege in the modern world. But it's not the same thing as a Sabbath. A Sabbath is an entire day set aside for rest and worship. The phrase used in the Old Testament is a day that's dedicated to Yahweh. And so we just think of it as man, a whole day dedicated to Yahweh. But that doesn't mean like the sober kind of like over serious, mm -hmm. like we're just fasting all day yeah. and memorizing Leviticus. For us, that means like delight, like mm -hmm. what what is life-giving? What just brings us to those moments where we just feel so much gratitude to God for our, our place in His world? Mm -hmm. And what just draws us into deeper connection with God, with each other, with our own soul? And so for us, it's like nine times out of ten, it's the best day of the week mm -hmm. for all of us. And we love it, and we savor it, and we're always sad when it's over. <laughs> um, but we have another one six days later to look Absolutely. forward to.